So let's say you're a pretty confident, secure person, but you're dealing with some peers, subordinates, or even leaders who aren't so secure. Their insecurities might show up as anything from being indecisive, self-critical, self-sabotaging, to jealous, paranoid, or malicious. You have work to do, and needing to manage these behaviors gets old. Indeed, but such is life and better learn to manage these personality types of behaviors than fall victim to some of the unproductive or negative consequences of people's self-doubt, anxiety, or even aggression. Hi, I'm Jenny Clark, a conscious leadership expert who spent two decades in executive recruiting and talent management. Having worked with giants like Google, Spencer Stewart, I discovered that the secret to transformative leadership lies in the five dimensions of conscious leadership. And I'm here to help you unlock your full potential. Join me on this channel as we embark on an honest and vulnerable journey together to become the kind of leader that genuinely inspires organizational transformation. I have a few ways you can get involved in this conscious community. First, I've created a free career map to help you uncover your next career move. Second, I've created exclusive content for you with a community of like-minded leaders. And lastly, I send out a free newsletter every week. To learn more, check out the description in this video. Dealing with colleagues or leaders who exhibit behavior stemming from insecurity can indeed be challenging, but there are strategies you can employ to navigate these situations effectively while maintaining your own well-being and productivity. Here's some advice. I've had my share of insecure colleagues and team members who reported to me. One in particular stands out not because she was needy or demoralizing the team, but because she was an overachiever. Caitlin took on whatever challenge came up. She would initiate extra projects she felt were important to build out a new capability the team needed. She was a workhorse who put in long hours to find solutions. She was gifted with a brilliant mind and a lot of this came easy for her. Her performance was stellar. She received excellent performance ratings and she was admired by her peers and considered a collaborative team member. The problem was that she was showing signs of strain, the strain she put herself under. She seemed underweight and was out sick more than others. As I got to know Caitlin, it was clear that she was dealing with some challenging family issues. She was single with no children but her parents and siblings relied on her for financial and other support. Pouring herself into her work seemed to be a way to avoid dealing with some of the family dynamics while feeling like she was still supporting their needs. In our one-on-ones, I always tried to set reasonable goals and expectations, urging her to take time, even a leave, if she had issues that would be best dealt with by being away. I had to respect boundaries and could not ask about her mental health, but she did offer that she had a therapist. That was a relief to know, but I remained concerned that she was trying to do too much. It was as if she never felt like she did enough. I'm no therapist, but it also seemed like a compulsion, an addiction to compensate for some emptiness, and I didn't want to do anything to worsen it. Now, I did regularly express my appreciation for exemplary work product and her contributions to the team, I also expressed my concern for her well-being. Caitlin trusted me and knew my concerns were valid. She agreed to take some time off to take stock of her work and life. She came back willing to talk about a more moderate workload, which I wholeheartedly supported, and her longer-term plans that might even mean moving off my team to another group, which I understood and supported. There were no guarantees that these same behaviors wouldn't show up in her new job, on this new team, but at least she could hopefully continue working with her therapist and know the signs when her behaviors were compromising her well-being. Caitlin's deep insecurities showed up seemingly constructive ways, but took a toll on her mental and physical well-being. I did my best as her manager to help her become aware of potentially unhealthy tendencies and to set some boundaries and even learn to delegate and learn to manage others by part of her career development. Here's some lessons. Empathize and understand. Try to understand where someone's insecurity might be coming from. It could be related to personal experiences, work pressure, or a lack of self-confidence. Empathy can help you approach the situation with patience and compassion. 
we're used to seeing insecurities as imposter syndrome where people question if they're good enough. In Caitlin's case, she knew she was talented but felt she owed more because of it. So whatever she did was never enough. Her issues were deep-seated and needed the help of a professional. Set clear expectations. Ensure that roles, responsibilities, and expectations are clearly defined, if not written out. This can reduce ambiguity and anxiety, helping individuals feel more secure in their roles. With Caitlin, her own expectations overtook those I had, but to her detriment, which I had to point out. Provide constructive feedback. If appropriate and within your role, offer constructive feedback and guidance to help them improve their skills or overcome their insecurities. Focus on specific actions or behaviors rather than personal traits. Acknowledge their achievements. Celebrate their successes and accomplishments. Positive reinforcement can boost their self-esteem and confidence. Lead by example. I say this all the time. Demonstrate confidence and resilience in your own work. Your behavior can serve as a model for others. Your ability to contribute to a healthy, trusting team dynamic and culture can support all team members, especially those working through doubts and insecurities. Here's what I want you to take away from this. Remember that while you can offer support and guidance, individuals ultimately need to take responsibility for addressing their insecurities and self-doubt. Your role, whether as a colleague or leader, is to facilitate a positive and productive working environment to the best of your abilities, while also protecting your own well-being and career progression. I know firsthand how taking that first step can be the catalyst for a life-changing transformation. I remember the moment I decided to harness my own strength and it made all the difference in my career. That's why I've created a career mapping tool just for you, to help you uncover your unique competencies and leverage them to design your own career map. Take the first step towards your next level by clicking the link in the video description. And let's start this incredible journey together.